Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to the Singapore International Market Update. My name is Scott Walker. I'm the country manager for Singapore and Indonesia, and I'll be taking you through a few slides to give you a picture of where we're at in the market at the moment. So how are we doing in the Singapore market? Well, 2018 was another year where records fell. 447,800 visitor arrivals up 3% on the previous year. Now this is a significant number, especially when you consider that 78% of these people were traveling to Australia for leisure purposes. Not only that, we achieved a record in December with month of December of seeing 58,200 Singaporeans visit. And it's the most we've ever had in a single month period. Now, since this presentation was produced, we've actually received the January figures, which are even higher. 450,500 Singaporeans visited Australia. That's a growth of 5% and almost 18% in the month of January, which is fantastic. In terms of spend, we've seen a little bit of a decline down 3%, but we're still hovering about the 1.4 billion market. So for arrivals, Australia is the sixth largest, Singapore is the sixth largest market for Australia and uh, eighth largest when it comes to visitor spend. Typically a Singaporean spends about seven nights in Australia. Now, as those records are still falling, let's have a look at the most important factors for Singaporean consumers when selecting a holiday destination. Consistently, we've seen over the years that safety and security plays a very important role when selecting a holiday destination. Fortunately, Australia does enjoy a good reputation for strong safety and security, but this is not something that you can easily promote. As we go down the list here, we see that nature and wildlife is increasing in importance over the last few years as a driver for holiday choice. Um, food and wine is also in the top five. Now, when we look at these uh, and we consider the latest promotional activity that we've been doing in the market uh, under the Undiscover brand, we've been dialing up that messaging to entice the Singaporean consumer. Value for money also one that is also one that consistently rates high. Now we think that that's dropped slightly because to be honest, airfares in the market are quite cheap. The expectation is that they are going to be cost effective. So now we're seeing that experiences are overtaking that as a choice uh, for selecting a holiday destination. In line with Tourism Australia's strategy, we are targeting the high value traveller in Singapore. Those travellers that are willing to travel long haul have a preference for Australia and represent a high value uh, client. So we're looking at 0.8 million high value travellers in Singapore that are considering Australia for their travel. And they represent about 20% of the Singapore long haul market. We're looking at about one in three Singapore visitors to Australia as being high value travellers. And we think that there is 0.6 million Singapore high value travellers that are currently not considering Australia that we can target to convert. They stay an average of nine nights. They spend two to three times more than the average traveller. And we see that the majority of them are travelling for free and independent reasons. Now getting into a little bit more detail about the opportunities and challenges in the market, and this is where we come in. At the moment, there's a very favorable exchange rate for the Singaporean customers. Now this definitely has a positive impact on overall arrivals and also the value for money proposition for the traveler. So it's a golden time for uh, the Singaporean traveler at the moment. We, we have strong partnerships with financial institutions and their OTA partners, and we're seeing that in the market, these are becoming more sophisticated and growing. Regional dispersal through multi-city and self-drive itineraries is an opportunity for the Singaporean customer, especially because they're more comfortable in Australia than a lot of first-time travellers, and there is such a significant proportion of repeat travellers. They're looking for Insta-worthy experiences, which is absolutely what Australia can deliver, um, and particularly hidden gems, artisanal and seasonal activities. So they're trying to find something new. Um, as part of our Undiscover campaign in the market, we've been trying to draw out these experiences with the help of our state partners and the Australian industry. This will be something that you might want to consider when you are talking to the buyers at ATE. What's new? What's different? What might they not know? 
um, we see that there is a potential growth market in uh, in fly cruise segment. The cruise segment in general uh, in Asia is exploding, and it is it, we're seeing that as a direct threat to outbound travel market. But we see that there is an opportunity for Australia to grow in that space. In addition to uh, those opportunities, I'd also like to highlight aggressive airline competition. The Access to Australia, which we'll discuss in a moment, is excellent, uh, but with that access comes fierce competition. So that has translated into an opportunity for the traveller to gain cheaper airfares, and sometimes that can be a key driver. While their spend might be large in the country, they'll still want to save on the airfare getting down there. Now, challenges in the market, there is the chance that there might be a, an economic, a little bit of an economic slowdown. Uh, if that becomes significant in any way, then that may impact the number of people going. But there's no reason to think that that's, uh, that's necessarily the case for the time being. Um, Japan and Europe continue to be the top mid long haul destinations. They are quite popular in the market and they're also very aggressive. We're also seeing that there is aggressive new entrants into the market, particularly uh, from Central European destinations. So cutting through that marketing noise can sometimes be a challenge when we're all competing for the same space. Having said that, Undiscover has been quite successful in bringing Australia to the front of mind for the consumer, as we've been able to canvas a lot of different media opportunities in the market over the last six months with the help of our key distribution partners and their network. Uh, of media channels. Finally, the value proposition uh, for Europe and Japan is quite good. Uh, we're seeing more and more cheap airfares into lots of different places in Europe. Uh, that, is, uh, that is difficult to compete against, although fortunately given the exchange rate and the competition that's happening down, uh, down in Australia uh, for the airline customer, we're still well placed to, to, make, to turn this into an opportunity. Um, I know I said finally, but I do want to add one more. We also want to highlight new trendy inspiration. Australia needs to be fashionable and on trend to be in the front of the, uh, the Singaporeans mind. So just considering that and how you can bring them something new and some new ideas to the market will help your business in the market. So to just go into a little bit more detail about the aviation landscape for the Singaporean customer, as you can see on the right hand side here, virtually all major cities are serviced direct out of Singapore. Singapore Airlines has the majority share with 45%. We've seen Scoot shooting up the rankings, now taking 22% market share. Qantas is sitting at about 15%, Emirates 8 and other airlines making up the final 10%. In addition to working with the airlines, we also work with major key distribution partners in the market. And we select these on their ability to provide core conversion points for our marketing activities uh, that have channels that we're able to leverage on uh, that are willing to drive uh, the messaging that Tourism Australia is bringing to the market, which uh, as we discussed before is Undiscover, and are able to collaborate well uh, with our STOs to develop new high yielding travel options and ultimately increase arrivals, length of stay and spend. So provided that they share our objectives and they're willing to grow the market with us, we work with these key distribution partners, which includes Chan Brothers, Cheap Tickets, Dynasty Travel, Holiday Tours and Travel, UOB Travel Planners, Formosa Holiday, Pacific Arena, which is Price Breaker, and Scenic Travel. So these are our major partners in the market. Some of these partners will invest cooperative dollars with, others will try to provide uh, value adds so that they're able to more easily sell Australia. And that includes offering Aussie specialist trainers and developing Aussie specialist trainers within their travel agent and frontline sales network. In addition to the importance of our KDP partnerships, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update about our recent and upcoming activities. Now, you may be aware that Tourism Australia in the Singapore market covers a wide range of activities, and our focus has really been on developing the Undiscover Australia campaign, which has canvassed a whole lot of media to generate a huge amount of noise. Now, 
our KDP partners have also bought into this campaign and they've been providing the platforms for direct conversion. We'll continue this to the end of the financial year with a little bit of a twist, working with the STOs to draw out individual experiences per state and continue the momentum of the campaign. We're also working with Singapore Airlines on a direct tactical sales promotion, which is always on, started in December and will finish at the end of this financial year. We had an Aussie specialist workshop uh, servicing up to 40 Aussie specialists. We had a product development forum, which, was, which is our pre-ATE briefing and also a chance for all of the states and ourselves to update the agents about what the new news is in the market. So hopefully we've got them ready for you. Uh, there was a travel fair held uh, between the 22nd and the 24th of February, the Natas Travel Fair. Now that was quite successful. I went there myself. Um, Australia was well represented by our KDP partners. A travel revolution is, uh, is, is coming up next week. How can you get involved in the market? Well, we really would like to see you targeting our key distribution partners. So you'll see many of them at ATE. If you haven't started to establish a relationship with them, then hopefully this will provide you with an opportunity to, to begin and to get your product into their networks. Work closely with the ITOs and their distribution network because that can often open up opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get to yourself. We can't be everywhere at once. Our Aussie Specialist Program, make sure that we're up to date with what's happening and uh, your help and participation in any kind of trade and media for Mill for that matter is also greatly appreciated by the market and generally highly impactful. Uh, also, we're looking, we're always looking for content to support the agents, articles, images, videos, blog posts, any kind of content that will show new news that we can get out there, particularly if it's bright and shiny. And that brings me to the end of our market update. I look forward to seeing all of you at ATE. If you have any questions about the Singapore market, myself and Anne Lim, our business development manager for Singapore, will be on hand at ATE to answer any of those questions and to help you with anything that you may need for the Singapore market. As always, thank you for your support and your interest in the Singapore market, and I wish you the very best for a fantastic ATE ahead. Thank you.